We just had Dutch babies for brunch today because we had leftover apples, so my dad decided to make them because it's like an old family recipe from his side of the family. And oh my god, it was so good, guys, so good. My tummy is happy. Hello everyone, it is Sam, and I hope you guys are having a lovely day today. I'm here today to give you guys a list. Today is going to be my top 10 favorite classic books. I realized the other day that it has been, oh, about three years since I did my top five favorite classic books. It was shortly after I started booktube. It was forever ago. It's a really awkward video because I was still new to making videos. And some things have changed since then. I've read more classics and I have new favorites. A couple of the ones I have in today's video will be similar to the ones I mentioned in that one three years ago, but I'm doing my top 10 today. So without further ado, and in no particular order, I will show you guys my top 10 favorite classic books. So the first one I have to mention is actually good for our current fall Halloween-y season, and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I read this a year ago. I actually did a full review on this, so I'll leave it down below or linked in here somewhere if you guys are curious to see it. I think this book really explores human nature and what makes us who we are, like how we are shaped by our past and the events that occur in our lives. And the story itself is so different from any of the movies, but I still really enjoyed it. And getting to hear not only from Frankenstein's perspective, but as well as perspective of his monster was something that I didn't expect and something that I really enjoyed about this novel. I basically just liked how it kind of explored human nature and how other people's actions influence the people that we become, as well as our own actions too, like the way that we handle situations and how that kind of shapes who we are as people. The next one is another one that I read about a year ago, and that is Tenet of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I love this book. This actually became my favorite Bronte novel out of all of the sisters. This one is my favorite. It follows a young woman who has taken up residence in a nearby manor house with her young son, not without a man, and who is trying to earn her own living by painting. And basically she has scandalized the entire local neighborhood. But she is befriended by one young man who lives here in particular, and it kind of discovers her history and her background and why she is here and, and what she is hiding from. Anne Bronte really takes a hard look at how we view and judge other people without knowing their full story, basically judging a book by its cover and forming opinions without actually talking to the people in particular and realizing that everybody has stuff going on in their lives and just because somebody is acting a certain way, perhaps they're not always the friendliest person, it might be for a reason. They might be having their own struggles. And I really enjoyed this book. It was definitely an interesting story and one that I felt was entirely engrossing. Next up is Bleak House by Charles Dickens. This is a beast of a book, but it is really, really good. It's often hailed as a Charles Dickens masterpiece and I can see why the way that he wove the entire story together. You have all these interlocking characters and about midway towards the end of the book, you discover just how they're all related to each other. They're basically all caught up in this case of John Dice and John Dice, which is this inheritance case that's been going on for years. It's been tied up in courts. So a lot of people have lost money trying to get the money from this inheritance. And in particular, it follows our main protagonist of Esther. The story is actually told mostly from her perspective, although there are a few chapters that are from an omniscient narrator's perspective. This is actually the only Charles Dickens novel that is told from a first person female narrative. And I really enjoyed this book. I like the character of Esther. She's a definitely a very compassionate and kind-hearted soul, as well as that of her benefactor, John John Dice. And I like seeing all of the stories and how everybody's life was basically affected by this inheritance case. It's really, really great story. It's a little bit of a beast to get through because, you know, in typical Dickens fashion, he's a little bit on the verbose side and a little bit dense, but I still enjoyed the overall story. Also, the BBC adaptation that was done a few years ago is an excellent one to watch in case you are curious to see the movie version. Next is another Bronte novel, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is actually my first foray into the Bronte sisters writing. I read this back in college and I could not put it down. I remember actually reading this instead of doing homework because I was an accounting business major so didn't really get to read novels. I was not an English major sadly but I was reading this on my own. I remember sitting there thinking oh god I need to study for midterms but I can't put this down because I need to know what's going to happen. I think everybody's pretty familiar with this the story of Jane Eyre. It's about a governess who takes on the role of becoming a governess for this man's ward and she ends up kind of falling in love with this man but she figures out finds out that he has sort of a dark past and is hiding a secret. And ah, I love this book. I love how the Bronte sisters all kind of wrote strong independent female characters who know their own mind and aren't afraid to, you know, follow their own heart, if you will. And I, it's a, it's a good story. I don't like it as, I like Ten of Waffle Hall definitely a little bit more, but this one is still 
solidly on my top 10. Next is Emma by Jane Austen. This is my favorite of all of Austen's novels. I don't know what it is about this book, but I find it so entertaining. I am overdue for a reread. I haven't read this book in years, but I love the story of Emma trying to match make all of her friends and how that kind of ends up becoming a disaster. And I, I just love this story. I love the more recent BBC adaptation that was done about 10 years ago. And I love this book. I love them both so much. The story is just fun and I, I just like the lightheartedness of it all. It's funny because a lot of people don't much care for this one, including Jane Austen's own family. I remember reading in this annotated version of Emma I have, which is actually right here. It's this big beast of a book, but that version actually has annotations in addition to the text of the novel that kind of describe the history of the book and how she was writing it. And in that book, they said that her, when she gave this book to her family to read, they all hated it. And she liked her protagonist of Emma, but her, her whole family did not like it, which I thought was kind of funny. I like it, so I'm with you, Jane. Next is another Charles Dickens, and that is A Christmas Carol, because of course. <laughs> This was actually my first introduction to Charles Dickens. I've mentioned it before on my channel, but that was because my family used to read the Christmas Carol every single Christmas Eve. And from the time that we were able to read, we would all contribute and read a little bit from the book and we would just, you know, read it. And so then we would go to bed and then Santa would come and we'd wake up on Christmas morning. But it's only, the actual story of A Christmas Carol isn't as long as people think. It's only like, uh, I think, I think a hundred pages, so it only would take a couple hours to read, but it was one of my fondest childhood memories. It was one of my favorite things about Christmas was reading it and sitting there listening to the story next to the tree and excited for Santa to come and yeah. Anyway, so it's, it's made, remained one of my favorite stories, not only because I love Christmas and because I enjoy Charles Dickens, but also because of all the memories associated with it. The next two are a couple of Alexandre Dumas novels, the first one of which is The Three Musketeers. I think everybody is aware of this. It's one of the most famous Alexandre Dumas stories. I would have to say there's so many adaptations, but the story itself is pretty fun. I like following the misadventures of the three musketeers. Porthos, Aramis, Athos, and then their companion, D'Artagnan. I really, really like this story. They're, they're just so ridiculous and absurd, and they get into so many scrapes and get embroiled in the politics of the time, and it's just a lot of fun. And the next one is that one that I'm actually currently reading, but I already know this is going to become a new favorite, so I had to include it in this video. And that, of course, is The Count of Monte Cristo, The Tale of Revenge. I am all about this book. It is so good. I actually like it better than The Three Musketeers so far, and I'm only a third of the way into it, but I, I can't not mention it because I know I'm going to end up loving this book so much. I am reading it slow. It's over a thousand pages. So I'm taking my time with it and enjoying it and soaking it in. It's one of those books that you definitely have to like to read and process and just kind of enjoy slowly. It's also a really great read for the fall season I've discovered. But it is so good. I love, love, love watching Edward get his revenge on all the people that screwed him. It is such a fun book. It's definitely full of a lot of heartache, but a lot a lot of like, yeah, you go get him kind of moments, and I am enjoying it immensely. The next book is another one that I am also very much overdue for a reread, and that is The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. I read this one back in high school, and I don't know, I fell in love with it. It is a tale of pilgrims. They're on, they're on a pilgrimage to a shrine, and to pass the time, they're all telling various stories. They're often a little bit on the crude side. They're often absurd, occasionally sad, usually kind of humorous, and it's definitely a fun book. It's also the only Chaucer I have read. I do want to read more by him. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I really like the Canterbury Tales. This is most famous for a reason, and it's because it's just vastly entertaining, and it's funny how relevant a lot of the topics are to this day, and it's also hilarious how, how cussy all of those pilgrims were, and how crude. So it's, it's funny how fart jokes have never really gotten old. Adults still like to laugh about fart jokes. And the last one is another favorite from my childhood, and that is Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. My mom had my sisters and I all read this when we were about 11 or 12 years old, and I'm so glad she did because this is such a lovely story. Some people find it to be sickeningly sweet. I don't, I really like this story. It's a tale of four sisters coming of age during the Civil War era, and basically just the trials and tribulations that follow a young woman around. It's definitely on the heartwarming side. There are definitely some very happy moments as well as some very sad moments, and I enjoy it so much. I also like all of the adaptations that have been done. I also know there's going to be a new one that is coming out in the next year or so, a miniseries, which I'm very excited for. I have to say this is another 
book in which I enjoy the movie adaptations just as much as the book, but it is definitely a good one. Another excellent read for the fall and winter months, and one that I recommend to anybody, particularly if they are new to classic literature. All right, guys, that is it for my top 10 classic books. I hope you guys enjoy seeing some of the classics that I love that are close to my heart. You have to let me know if you have read any of these, what your thoughts are on them, or it, what your favorite classic book is, because I would love to know that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.